Think about the cultural attributes that we have in place. And so, um, you know, these are, these are written, these are talked about, these are taught. Uh, Christ-centeredness is the banner cultural attribute that all of our attributes fly under. Uh, there are others, of course. You know, we talk about uh, what Christ-centeredness means in terms of leadership across Youth for Christ. Well, we want to be leaders who lead with enduring humility, for example. Mm-hmm. Leaders who lead with courageous faithfulness, relentless trust. Uh, that's not a complete list, but those those concepts then fly under this banner of Christ-centeredness. And I think that that's uh, inspired all the way from the beginning. That That's the leadership that was modeled in the mid-40s, and that's who we want to be as Christ-centered leaders uh, today in 2023. I also think that you see it, Michael, at the board level. Uh, this is a national board that's gathered that's good and godly, and they set the tone. Uh, it was... My predecessor, who reminded me when I stepped into this role, he said, never forget, they love you, but they love the mission more. And Mm, that is true when I think about our national board. They they love me, but they love the mission more. And that's what they're in place. That's what I'm in place uh, as a trustee to steward and guard. Um, So you see that play out in all across our mission, whether it's corporate prayer, uh, times of worship, uh, times of public reading of scripture together. Uh, taking communion together, partaking in communion. Um, these are practices that are in place at all of our meetings and gatherings and conferences so that we remain focused on being Christ-centered leaders through whom uh, God might use to reach a million kids or more. Uh, and that's the idea. So, I, you know, I, I think another way it plays out, Michael, is we don't actually have a founder culture in Youth for Christ. And I know a lot of organizations do, and I I can't imagine how difficult that might be to pivot out of a founder culture or to succeed in a, in a founder culture. But you mentioned Billy Graham is our first employee. He's, he's not our founder. Uh, There were a group of men who uh, were compelled by the Holy spirit to launch this ministry called Youth for Christ. He just happens to be One of those that we remember most vividly, of course, because of what he went on to do for the Mm -hmm. kingdom. Uh, But we don't have that uh, founder culture that we're trying to navigate. And we've got lots of distributed authority on purpose. You know, we're a we're a grassroots field led, locally led organization. And so we've got accountability structures in place uh, where those local leaders actually form a governing body called the Council of Delegates in Youth for Christ, which if we're a for-profit, you might say it's employee-owned. That's a very similar structure to what we enjoy at Youth for Christ, where our local field leaders actually play a role in governing and stewarding the mission alongside the National Board of Trustees. So those are some some ways that I think from the very beginning, uh, this 79-year-old organization has been set up Uh, to be governed uh, with relentless trust. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more finance, governance, and fundraising news and insights for your church or ministry.